just be warned. The clips we're showing you are bad enough, but if you go and watch the trailers or clips available on Hulu or YouTube or FX, they're even worse, not to mention the show itself. Ah! New girl. Say hi to the world. Mom? Get in. There's no more putting this off. Your dad is the devil and you're the antichrist. I'm supposed to accept that you had sex with Satan or anyone? Please allow me to introduce myself. Come to your father, Damien. Oh, you're a girl. Okay, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse in Hollywood, here comes Little Demon. Can everyone please stop talking about my period? Oh God, no, Bruce. Did your mom tell you that? I'm talking about the teens you murdered. I didn't mean to. Don't let other people's moral laws make you think what you did was wrong. Together, you and I can create a future without rules, where you can call your own shots. Live the life you want to live. So what is this show, Little Demon? Well, it's a show on FX, a brand new TV series available on Hulu as well. FX is a subsidiary of Disney. And so ultimately this can be traced back to Disney, ironically enough in some ways, but the show has this as its premise. This is the self description of the show. 13 years after being impregnated by Satan, a reluctant mother and her antichrist daughter attempt to live an ordinary life in Delaware. The two are constantly thwarted by monstrous forces and Satan who yearns for custody of his daughter's soul. Sounds like a great show, huh? Bear in mind that it is an animated show, but it is supposed to be targeting adult audiences. It actually has a TV mature rating, at least according to the trailer that we watched. It has adult language, nudity, violence, a lot of gory violence. And so they're targeting adult audiences, but it's animated, which animation draws kids in by default. And then of course, the show is targeting adults, so kids feel like they're not supposed to watch it. So how many kids want to go watch it because they're not supposed to watch it? So let's take a closer look at this show. Look at me. I'm bad grandma. A little, little bit. As you can tell from the clips, the show is full of all sorts of dark images about hell, about the devil, makes light of these ideas. Of course, it's meant to be a comedy of sorts. And so of course, I'll be making fun of the ideas in general, trying to normalize the ideas to a certain degree, present a more palatable view of these ideas according to some. And it's definitely an undermining of the biblical truth and the biblical reality of hell, who Satan actually is, his actual goals. You look at, for example, Danny DeVito, who plays the role of Satan in this show. In an interview, he said, the devil is really not a bad guy, he's just misunderstood. But the devil is really a good guy, don't, don't get me wrong. Really? Well, of course, that's a totally unbiblical view about who the devil actually is, but that's the portrayal they are giving. And so they're giving this different view that's utterly anti-biblical of hell, which makes it seem like it's not, it's not that bad. The devil's not that bad of a guy. Maybe hell's not that bad. It may not even be real, so why worry about it? What do you make of this thing, biblical or the media? So no doubt that is a lot to take in. Let's highlight just a few key points as we think about these issues biblically and rightly. First of all, consider the natural progression of sin in a culture. The natural progression of sin in a culture is to get worse and worse and worse. As a people rebel against God, abandon his word, abandon his authority, they tend towards more of their own authority, trying to define right and wrong for themselves, and it leads to abandoning of biblical truths and norms, and things get worse and worse as a result. We see that in the culture happening right before our very eyes. If we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says this, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, Talking about the last days. That's the general context. And then we skip down to verse 13. We read this. Well, evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. They'll go on from bad to worse. So from the time Christ ascended and before he returns, that those will be the last days and things will go from bad to worse. Think about Noah's day where sin kept getting worse and worse up to the point where every inclination of their heart was only evil all the time. And so what we read in scripture seems to be playing out in our culture right before our very eyes, where people are rejecting biblical truth now to the point, and it's not necessarily new, but a new example with this little demon of just utterly making fun of or making light of the biblical realities of things like hell, Satan, eternity, and so forth. Where have you been my whole life? The metaphysical realm. It's not hell, but it's got the essentials. Another thing to consider as we are talking about this show, Little Demon, that is the influence of Satanism in our culture. And there's no doubt there's been a rise of the influence of this ideology, of this religion, of Satanism. You can see it in numerous ways in our culture. You have different Satanist groups trying to get into public schools saying, hey, if you're having different clubs or different sources, then we should have a Satanist club where kids can come and learn about Satanism. 
and there are multiple articles, headlines that talk about that. And when you talk about Satanism, it's not just what we typically think of when you think of Satanism. Satanism in general comes in two basic forms. You have theistic Satanism, which that's a group who believes Satan is a real being, a supernatural being, that it's worthy of worship and following and adoration and so forth. So there's that variation. And then there's also what's called atheistic Satanism which is a group who would say, you know what, the devil's not real, but the ideas he stands for, the rebellion, the autonomous attitude, it's all about me, I'm my own God, I can live life my own way, that's something worthy of praise and worship and following after. So they follow after the idea of Satan, but don't believe he's actually a real being. So as we think about the show, either way, it's promoting one of those two versions of Satanism, right? That either the idea of theistic Satanism, where Satan is a real being, but he's not as bad as the Bible would tell you. No, he's not that bad of a guy. As we mentioned earlier, Danny DeVito, who plays Satan, says, The devil is really a good guy. Don't, don't get me wrong. And he's a relatable character. And so he's not that bad. He's worthy of maybe worship or following. So it could be promoting that sort of Satanism, or they could be pushing, in a sense, the atheistic Satanism, which says, no, it's not real. And so they're making fun of it, making like a fairy tale. The devil's not real. The Antichrist idea, that's not real. Hell's not real. They're all fairy mythology, but some of the ideas behind Satan may be worth following. These autonomous attitudes and we can live our own best lives. We define truth for ourselves. We're our own authority, which is the spirit of this age, which is an utter rejection of biblical truth. And it's not just Satanism that the show is seeking to normalize to one degree or another. The actress who plays Laura, which is the mother of the daughter who is the Antichrist, which is all just weird to say, by the way. The actress who plays her, her name is Aubrey plaza and she's being interviewed about the show and she said this i love uh that we are normalizing paganism um laura is a pagan she's a witch she's jacked she's um she's got to protect her daughter from demons and uh and she's got to get her house in order and so this actress is excited that we are normalizing paganism. Well, what is paganism? Well, paganism is just basically, it's either a polytheistic or a pantheistic nature worshiping religion. So it either believes there are multiple gods, but it's all related to nature and worshiping nature through that, or believes that actually something called pantheism, where actually the whole universe is God. So all that makes it the universe is actually God. Not a personal being God, but just everything is God. And so by worshiping nature, you're worshiping God in a sense. Paganism is completely absolutely non-biblical, a rejection of biblical truth, that there is just one God, he's a personal being, that we are made in his image, that he's separate from his creation, he's the creator, we're the creation, we've been broken by sin, we need to be reunited with him through the perfect atoning work of Christ, the debt we can never pay, it rejects all of that, and says, no, it's all about your autonomous self and you defining truth for yourself. Again, completely non-biblical and incompatible with the biblical worldview. But it is the ideology that they want you to embrace and to see normalized in our culture. So as we think about their efforts to normalize these unbiblical ideologies, one can't help but think of Isaiah 5.20, which says, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil. Enter darkness to light and light to darkness, who replace bitter with sweet and sweet with bitter. But one last thing to consider as we wrap up our take looking at Little Demon here. First, and that is our parental responsibility to guard our kids against the ideas and prepare them to engage the ideas they'll be hit with in this culture. Especially in regards to entertainment, media, shows, especially shows that could be very attractive to them because they are animated or something along those lines. And then the Bible tells us this in Ephesians 6, 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. We're to raise our children in the truth of God's word. They need to know the reality for the Bible teaches on all things, including eternity, including the devil, including hell, so they can be ready to give an answer to these false ideas presented in shows like Little Demon. And so practically speaking as parents, we need to know what our kids are watching. Be aware of the screen time they're getting. I know that can be hard to do. I'm a parent, my son is eight, my daughter's four at the time of recording this video. So I know it can be hard to do, sometimes you want to sit them down in front of the TV for the babysitter so you can have a little 
little bit of a break or do what you need to do, but that is no excuse. We've been given a God-given mandate and responsibility to be aware of the ideas that our kids are being hit with, especially through the screens they find so attractive. So let's be sure we know what our kids are consuming. And then of course, it's always a good idea if we can to get our kids away from these screens, away from playing the Wii, playing video games, watching TV, engaging our kids, doing fun activities, playing some basketball, going camping, taking the dog for a walk, just doing stuff together, drawing a picture together. Me and my son have been drawing a lot of pictures together lately, so much fun. Me and my daughter dance together, different stuff, but just engage your kids, give them something to do other than screen time. It'll be beneficial to them, of course, course and of course you'll love the interaction for yourself and you'll be blessed by it and it'll help protect them from some of these awful ideas that are so prevalent in our culture today. If you want more on this issue of Satanism and the fall of Satan, check out this great video here by Bodhi Hodge. Until next time, keep sending God's word, defending the faith, and proclaiming the gospel.